Hey everybody, this is JSC, and that's my friend Emile Giroux. What's happening? Hi John, how are you this morning? Fantastic. I want to make sure everyone knows what's happening here. Let's set the tone. Okay. So uh, I'm in Orange County, California, and you're in Long Beach. In Long Beach. I mean, just right up the road, okay. really. 45 minutes if there's no traffic. <laughs> yeah, LA traffic is like no other right now. <laughs> it's real special. Awesome. So. Uh, your business is called M2 Fitness Pros, and although you're based in Long Beach, I know you've consulted people and do consult people and coach them uh, all over the world. Yes. And uh, your area of expertise, although you do have a lot of cool skill sets, is uh, figure, uh, physique, and bikini uh, coaching and training. Yes, uh, particularly the uh, fat loss niche. I mean, there's you know aspects that a lot of uh, other trainers and coaches uh, focus on regarding just that training model, which is just the fitness or the uh, strength training. But it's those crucial months leading up to a competition, uh, preparing how to uh, eat correctly, mm -hmm. and going through different phases of the diet with carbs and proteins and fats. You know what? We got to you got to give a bicep shot because you're so ripped right now. Just do it. Now, this is un unconventional for our sh our show, but that's just ridiculous, dude. That's just so 50, 52 year old guy, I do all right. I do all right. I'm about four percent body fat right now. Uh, getting ready for a photo shoot this weekend, so I'm a little depleted right now. Feeling a little crazy, but good spirits. Good spirits. <laughs> so you didn't you didn't go and have a go to Denny's and have a Grand Slam breakfast? Oh, you know what? I every week I get a chance to go and have pancakes. So I go to all the different pancake places. Uh, in the area, I find the pumpkin pancakes, I get a stack, <laughs> usually I'll go with a friend of mine and sometimes I get the opportunity to eat half of their plate as well. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have a strategy that allows me to have a full and extensive cheat day, if you will, uh, nutritionally speaking, and then I sandwich in certain things through the week so I can still feel like a, a regular person, but then go back into a semi-depletion phase to correct uh, some of the intense water gain and so on and so forth. Well, I, let's. I want to touch on a lot of different things here because um, there's a, there's a business lesson here too because you have a very unique niche and you're very successful at it. Um, and you have competition, but I would say that you're definitely a standout, which you know you and, and it's allowed for a cool lifestyle and uh, and for you to have a lot of fun. Um, and secondly, you know, I want you to give away uh, some of your uh, good strategies for leaning out, some errors you see other trainers making, trainers and coaches. Like, what, what the heck do they do on a regular basis? You're like, gosh, I can't believe they did that. That's why the photo shoot, that's why the abs didn't come out. That's why we didn't get this sinewy look that we wanted, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then what's kind of, we'll go into some, some different things here as well. But, you know, you guys, let me, let me say something here real quick, because this is uh, an interesting side note. Um, as, as a lot of you know who watch my videos, I have uh, two daughters and uh, one of them is uh, approaching her 18th birthday at the time that we're uh, uh, filming this. <coughs> filming, God, that sounded old. Taping, recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so, you're hating yourself, yeah. John. <laughs> so, you know, so obviously over the years, you know, some of my fitness and healthy living influence has, has rubbed off on them and, and you know, uh, one of them uh, trains at Gold's Gym down the street, and then we have a we have a, a gym at the house here, and they hike and run cross country and track. and And the oldest one did MMA with me for two years, and um, you know, um, so they, they they caught the bug. And and my oldest daughter uh, Sophia, for whatever reason, she got the idea that she wanted to do a figure competition. You know, like like if she was if she was fourteen or fifteen, I'd say you know keep working out and don't worry about it right now. But you know, she's going to be eighteen. She's been an athlete uh, for a while, and, and so she wanted to, to do this. And, uh, you know, like, I've been in this long enough that I could probably make it work, but I'm not an expert uh, like Emil is. So I actually hired Emil uh, to train my daughter. So, look, this is, this is how much I believe in, in what he's doing, you guys. Like, if, you, if you've read my bio and know what I do, like, I could figure it out, right? But I'm not going to attain the same results as as he will. And the cool thing is, this is this is great, Emil. I'm, I'm on uh, a, not the exact same diet program because obviously we're different people, but I've learned a lot from you. And uh, I've probably dropped uh, four or five percent body fat as well. 
and um, I feel a lot better, and I'm way leaner, and my training is going really well. So thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, Sophia is really great. She's adapting, and for someone at this se uh, season, I call them seasons, and yeah. you're in a different season. Uh, she's doing really well with her ability to adapt to this, and this is the thing. And uh, this is, you know, we kind of briefly talked about this earlier. The challenges that I see occurring within our industry and then in just people in general is that we don't take really an account uh, of what the rest of their life is like once they're outside of our eyesight. So I really have to get a full immersion, almost get embedded uh, in the life of the person so that I can look at a 24 hour schedule seven days a week. And it's not just high by, you know, for this training session that they have during that week. I need to know workload, stress load, uh, life, friends, peer groups, you know, mm -hmm. study habits. Uh, if it's a student that we're dealing with, other outside hobbies, everything has to be detailed and, 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 and uh, looked at to almost do a deep forensic study, if you will, mm -hmm. on that person so that I can make sure that I'm not asking of them something that I do not feel that they can do in a timely manner and still manage everything else because I don't want to feel like they feel they're frustrated and it's uh, going to be a, a failed attempt. I don't enjoy seeing the disappointment. So well, what I, and I've always said that too. So I have one hour to help you and you have 23 hours to screw it up. And boy, oh boy, I've seen people <laughs> screw it up in those 23 hours. So um, as we you know detail what goes on with a customer or a client or a competitor, um, you know, it's it's that final 12 to 16 weeks that are the most crucial. And then when you get down to that final month, there can be once someone goes into the lower levels of body fat and they're single digits for a male, ultra low. And then for a female, as they start approaching those single digits, um, the psychology that goes on really starts to change in their head and there's an interaction and a dynamic that occurs with uh, friends and family as they go into a place physically where visually they look so different to all of their associates and family members that sometimes there's a little self-doubt and that little voice starts playing in their head so I'm really uh, I think one of my better skill sets is along with the fat loss just being able to assess what I hear and what I see happening with that individual so that I can tailor what needs to be managed better uh, to keep the stress levels down and and then put and plug in certain elements that um, instead of listening to music and posing music all the time, I'm going to give them some really good audio books and programs that I feel help them start to reflect some of their higher core values so that they can inspire and be that lighthouse, uh, if you will, to other people instead of, hey, look at me, look how cute I look. You know, I want to really have that person be somebody that others look to and say, hey, you know, I really love what you're doing. Can you show me how to do that? So it's that pay it forward thing. Well, you know, I, I know I have this talk with Sophia, and I know that the three of us got on Skype and, and, and talked about it as well. And I, and I told her, and then this, you know, this is a lesson for um, anyone who who's, wants to train someone at a high level, because that's what's happening now. Um, is that I told her, I said, there's going to be times when you're totally frustrated. I said, this is going to, she's worked very hard. She's, she's taking college level courses and she gets, she has a 4.0 and you know, and she's, she's smart. Like, you know, we, we have, we have, and she's beyond her years, but we, you know, we hold very high expectations of them and, and, and they, and they meet the challenge. Um, I said, you know, this is going to be probably the most challenging thing you've ever done in your life. There are times when you're going to hate it, and there are times when you're going to be really excited. There's times when you're tired and you got to push through, and there's times when you have to learn to listen to your body in ways that you never understood or even considered before. And and so what you know when when I'm working with her through your guidance uh, in between your coaching sessions and all that, I'm emphasizing to her, you know, think about how it feels, not how it looks. What is the message your body's telling you right now? Um, and how to ease in and out of motions and, and how to emphasize when you're supposed to and relax when you're supposed to, but rather than just like, okay, we're gonna push hard, we're gonna drive, and you know, like that, all that's great, but it's more about the psychology of success and the unraveling of the mystery 
of the story your body's telling you. Absolutely. I agree 100%, John, in that, uh, that aspect, the uh, thought process mm -hmm. and, and feeling the body and listening to the biofeedback that it's giving you and then being able to communicate that um, you know, with some properly placed questions to get that out of the athlete or the person that we're working with because it really, really makes a difference because a lot of times the athlete or the person getting ready for a competition, uh, they, their friends and family have no idea what's going on in their head and the only person that's really going to know is another competitor but people are so closed off they don't want to know or they don't want anybody to know their little secrets or what have you and there's really no secrets I mean we could all go on the internet and find all of this information but it's the skilled craftsman that's going to make the proper adjustment at the right time to produce that measurable concise to the point outcome or result every single time that is where it, it comes into play and whether you're dealing with athletes or models or entertainers that are getting ready for a tour and a photo shoot for I was gonna say album cover right? <laughs> uh, you know, the CD uh, they have to have a look and they have to be able to still manage and keep that game face on so definitely the psychology uh, behind it which you know I wanted to congratulate you as well on your Wexford University and what's okay. going on with your process there because I think that is probably the most crucial area. Uh, all of the new trainers coming up in our information and knowledge worker environment uh, really needs to focus because technology, it's easy stuff. I mean, I was scared to death of computers and all of that. But I was too. I, I finally got over that hump uh, a few, you know, decade ago or so, but it's the study of psychology and human behavior and understanding the mechanics of the mind. And um, I haven't really dug in as deep as I want to. And I, I've seen what you've done and I've had a chance to witness some of the things that you've done with people. So combining these schools, mm -hmm. uh, fitness and uh, psychology or sports psychology, I I'm just nuts about it. I'm okay. excited about what the next phase of our careers are going to be like mm -hmm. um, as we are people that can help inspire and influence uh, the, the trainers coming up. I don't like to say the word junior or younger or what have you, but some that are on the front end of the journey yeah. so that they can participate and really get a good uh, mentor or someone who's that role model that says, hey, you might want to get away from all the tactics and all of the games and really focus on these true north mm -hmm. uh, types of principles. So hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I'll, I'll tell a brief story, very brief, that actually resonates with what you're saying. Uh, before I started doing MMA and the other arts, I did uh, Kung Fu for 12 years. And, and I studied under a descendant uh, that brought my style of Kung Fu uh, from Hong Kong. And, and he always said, you know, people want to know what are the secrets of Kung Fu? Because you see, you know, the Bruce Lee movies and all the old Hong Kong flicks, you know, where the, where the, the vocals aren't, uh, the spoken word isn't uh, synced up properly. It's awesome. Old school yes. stuff. Because they always saw that and they said, you know, what are these Kung Fu secrets? And, and my Kung Fu master uh, said to me, he goes, you know, people always ask that. He said, there are no secrets. It's just that I've learned something I haven't yet taught you. That's it. That's it. You haven't yet sought out the knowledge. You haven't asked for it or you haven't received it or you, you haven't put in the, the work necessary to be worthy of it. I mean, it's like, it's one of those things, but there are no secrets. That's true. It's very true. And you don't realize that until you get to the place that we are. You know, coming up, it's uh, having to, had to travel that journey. Um, it sounds real spiritual. And I know to others that listen to it, the younger guys like I was when I was coming up, I thought it was the hokiest stuff. I, I didn't know why. Because I'm, you know, I'm like a little street thug as a kid coming up. So my whole attitude is like, yo, man, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't believe all that. And as I've matured, I still got that little little gangster in the back of my head. But at the same time, I'm hearing and seeing the changes in the industry. And I see the importance of this 
uh, ability of understanding. So as soon as you can, you know, quiet the little voice. And I think you attract certain people. I attract and guys like Rocco and, you know, Dax and Brian Grasso and Sammy and all of the guys out there. Everybody has a different spin on it and they attract different people. But at the end of the day, if everybody can end up in the same spot, you know, saying the same message, I think we're going to have a nice cohesive group of like-minded individuals and a very, very strong uh, profession that I think surpasses all of them out there. All of them. Everybody is wanting to be doctors and lawyers and so on and so forth. Uh, pardon that expression, uh, Dr. Ellis. Uh, no, well, that's different. It's, it's edu a diff education, not uh, uh, Western medicine. Yes, and that's a whole other thing that we could spend hours about yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I'm excited about the things that this is representing right now. The timing is perfect um, as we move forward in the alignment of your daughter Sophia's goals and my opportunity to work with her and showcase uh, what I know about fat loss and the timing of the nutrition, which we can talk about briefly if you're interested, uh, and then also the psychological aspect at Wexford University and that what you brought out finally after, what has it been, 20 years that you've been, you know, 20 years, yeah. Opening the saw on getting this thing together, and now you've launched it, and that's just a gas to just watch and see it mature into something that's mm -hmm. going to be around for the rest of It's your legacy. Well, you know, someone said that, and I hadn't actually thought of it like that until they said it, but it probably to some degree will be, which is which is weird because if you, if you talk about legacy, it means you, you're, you're, on, you're on the second half. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, yes, we are, and it's okay. But this is the best half, brother. I, well, it, it does. It does seem that way. Um, I want to. I want to make sure that we give people some really good nuggets of wisdom when it comes to you know fat loss, body transformation. You know, I I definitely do more of the martial arts, fitness, and conditioning, and and before it was endurance sports, and. Um, and because I did all those things, or have done all those things, <clears throat> I never put on enough mass to do like a, uh, a, a fitness competition. I just, I just wasn't a, a big enough guy. I'm, I'm six foot and I weigh like 190 right now. The heaviest I was was 212. Um, but so I, you know, I just wasn't big enough to, to do that kind of thing. So it just wasn't, wasn't my thing. I didn't uh, seek it out as you do. But a lot of people want aesthetics as much or as much as or more than sports performance. So they're not going to be a sports performance athlete in one way or another. If they're you know CrossFit athlete or they're doing like uh, Tough Mudder or martial arts or you know marathon running, whatever they want, to, they want to look good at the beach. I mean, let's just call it what it is. You want to like the ladies want to look good in a sleeveless dress. Uh, guys want to have you know good looking abs for the beach. I mean, it is what it is. Let's just let's just let's just cut to the chase and be honest it's, about it. Yeah, I, it. So, yeah. so when people want that aesthetic part, and you see coaches and trainers doing stuff, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that." They they're missing the boat. What what are some of the biggest mistakes they're making? Um, right off the top, I think that there's a lack of understanding and confusing the type of diet or nutrition program that all of the different athletes have and some will try to use a you know strength athlete like for example a power lifter or maybe a, a lineman uh, in football the, the calorie consumption that they used for achieving that level of size and then apply it to everybody that they work with if they happen to be a crossfitter uh, they're gonna have a certain uh, paleo mentality and they'll apply that to everybody um, then you have the runner that has the eat everything. I call it the seafood diet. <laughs> the seafood, yeah. You no see, eat it, and eat it, and then hope at the end of the day when they add a little weight training program that they're going to look like the professional physique athlete. Now, bodybuilding and physique athletes have changed from the time Arnold and everybody in the 50s and 60s did it to what's going on now with the men's physique and the board shorts, and then with women of that same era coming up through, uh, you know, Rachel McClish and Corey Everson, oh, yeah. as we've moved all the way through the professional ranks and the pro bodybuilder woman versus the figure, um, there was a cross uh, section and the look started to happen and then it shifted into uh, figure. And now we even have more of a beach type body 
which is even softer. So now we have a better cross section of body types that people are seeing visually that they can go, oh, I want that look or that look or that look. So that's cool. But the process of getting the right diet and the right workload uh, for that type of body and then just having uh, the appropriate genetics uh, physically the structure there's a certain body type structure that's going to be dead on bikini there's no question Sophia has a bikini type body uh, and then there's that straight frame and they call them the soma types um, where the frame type might be a little thinner in the hip as far as females are concerned a little thinner in the hips a little thinner and I call them little boy hips uh, they're great runners, track and field specifically, because they don't have that pelvic shift that occurs. Oh, yeah. So I can see that just walking down the street. And when I see yeah. someone coming, I'm like, boom, that's a hot bikini body. And that's that's it. You know, when I see them, uh, and then it's tailoring the right diet. Um, secondly, the diet, uh, the timing of certain things. People become very nervous about uh, what was referred to in the industry as a cheat day. Um, and there's a different term within the bodybuilding community with the cheat day, uh, which pretty much uh, allows you to eat a lot of processed foods and sugar and so on and so forth. But there's just a small window of time right before competition where that may happen and you might choose to do that. Me personally, I do not like the feelings associated with eating certain quantities of sugars and just feeling brain dead after eating mm -hmm. a lot of that processed stuff. So my strategies right now are more based on plant-based nutrition. I've pulled away from a lot of real, real heavy supplementation. I want you to be coherent. I want you to be able to enjoy eating with friends when you go out, mm -hmm. but still manage to keep your diet tight and not a whole lot of the up and down mood swings like for example the post contest thing that happens is a 20 to 30 pound gain in weight from water and all the hormones and the damaging of your metabolism because you're fluctuating things so much that you permanently disable your metabolism so we want to make sure that those hormones are where they need to be that their body is consistently looking within five to 10 pounds of their competitive weight year round, year round. You don't ever want, this is not like try it, I'm just gonna do a show or a photo shoot, but this is forever. And I think that is the, that is the biggest mistake. And then when you're in, oh, I'm in my off season, I'm in my bulking phase. Yeah, it's a, such a bunch of crap because you look like a donut, you feel like a donut, <laughs> not inspiring to anybody. Yeah. And as a fitness professional, as a fitness professional, this is the hot tip, gang: stay in shape, walk your talk. Yeah, I, I get totally yeah. disappointed. If you have a gift and you have knowledge that you can share with people, but then you demonstrate it with physical choices in your body that look like you don't care about your body. You don't care about your body and I'm supposed to pay you to care about my body? It's not happening. Yeah, you know, I was just trying to think as you're saying that, what, what happened? I, from, I'm trying to think, when I was, a, was an, I was an endurance athlete doing Ironman and all that stuff, I, I uh, weighed, between 168 and 171 pounds, which for six foot is really lean, uh, and I was about I was about four percent body fat for a decade, which sounds crazy, but uh, you know that as, as, as an elite bit. endurance athlete, that's that's the way it was. And then um, for a while, I, I went the opposite direction. I, I was lifting a lot, and and then I was between like two 205 and 212, and I stayed there for like four years, and and now I'm 190 for the last. Four, four years, something like that, and I've only fluctuated three pounds in either direction for four years. That's then, great. So, but, but you know, the thing is, to me, it's like, well, there's, it sounds silly, but like, I know my clothes are going to fit. I know roughly what I'm going to look like if I go to the beach. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and and um, it's less stress on my body, and I like to have the predictability of knowing that. I have an ability, and, and by creating norms and standardization for everything in your life, I mean, there, there's variables in life and we need uncertainty too, that's part of being human. But some things you need to have known quantities, and I think understanding your body and maintaining your body in a certain way for an extended period of time 
uh, is advantageous. Now, how you tweak it within that range, you know, there, there is some, some variables within that. But these people that I see go up and down, up and down all the time, especially these guys that uh, are cutting like 30 pounds uh, he heavyweights or uh, light heavyweights for uh, a fight. And they go sit in the sauna and, and then they get an IV that night. And then the next day they're, they're up like 18 pounds. I mean, that is so, it's hard on your heart. It's hard on your heart. It can actually cause cellular damage because uh, it can it can uh, infu it's infusion or effusion of the cell, and it's it's not it's not good, man. It's not no. good. No, it's not. It's not. And, and I know we could talk about all of the medical implications of just the big swings, but it's this personal standard thing that you just mentioned. And if it's lifelong learning, you know, it's learning about the body, mind, spirit, uh, and the heart going all in the same direction and living your core values and it's just another physical representation when we take care of the goose that lays the golden eggs being our body um, that assures us to have that consistency that you mentioned uh, yeah I too am a clothing horse I too have you know <laughs> so blue, blue lemon, you know, wardrobe for you know the exercise professional or the fitness professional. But aside from all that, and other guys, I know that they'll listen to this uh, interview and they'll have you know preconceived ideas about you know this whole thought process. But that's fine. Um, as we move into the future, it is the it, we are moving from a blue collar industrial age mentality. And parents and grandparents have brought up those kids, uh, and now here you and I are. We're on that cross-section group of boomers that have now embraced the information age and are going in the direction of the knowledge worker. And it's so much more important, and this is the key. The thing that happens with your body when you are fueling it with high performance fuels, plant based foods, you know, and I call it being a, a nutritarian, not so much a vegan, but a nutritarian, someone who uses uh, their understanding of nutrition to eat a particular way. You can still have some meat, chicken, and fish, and all of that. And if you like a little dairy, that's great. But I don't want you to base your entire plan, your meal, or your plate on all just beef and red meats and everything so it's like once you start to eat like that the clarity and thinking and the energy levels that you have it's unbelievable it's unbelievable the minute I shifted from that mentality and started eating this particular way the energy was great and everything I read everything I hear everything I see everything that I feel it, it's it's comprehended I get it it's it's an awakening you know, it's funny you say can't, I cannot explain. Well, I, I, it's funny because um, I'm sure the people who watch this that are kind of the uh, uh, yogini vegan person, they're like, duh, you guys. But but all, all I can tell you that I, I've had like two epiphanies as far as uh, physical and mental clarity. And, and one is when I had a really deep yoga practice. And um, and I carry that over to the martial arts stuff. But the, But the... But that, that made me understand things at a completely different level, and it sounds woo-woo, but once you get to like an epiphany, and there's always another level, but, yes. you, you, but you have this incredible clarity. But the other thing is too, is that I very, very seldom eat red meat anymore, very seldom, and I have a much more plant-based diet, thanks to you, and I feel so much better. I, I, I mean, I just feel better, and, and, I, and it's, not, like, it's not like one of those things where like, you're presupposing it so there's an expectation of a given outcome. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what it was. I just happened to notice over time, oh my gosh, I'm getting abs again. Oh my gosh, I have clarity. I woke up and I feel refreshed. Um, my skin tone's better. Like all these different things, it's really, it's really interesting, but um, like the, the salads that uh, Sophia makes at night now, and I'm sure that you, this is a concoction that you came up with, but these crazy salads with like broccoli and cauliflower and these little uh, cherry tomatoes, and then uh, we'll put in like uh, chicken breast and, and uh, mushrooms. And, and we, you know, we were, you know what, we're, I'm, I'm just saying to you guys, it's so good. It's hungry, like, man. It's so, it's so, so good. I know, I'm getting hungry too. Um, um, on, on a totally side note, but I want your opinion on this. I think people appreciate this. I love huge portobello mushrooms. Oh, perfect. Are you, are you, so if yeah. we if we uh, lightly grill that and put that in the salad, is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, everything in nature in a salad is perfect. There's nothing wrong with anything. And I will say this um, just to ensure and to help people. I have a ton of resources with places. 
uh, for you to get you know a lot of the foods that you uh, want to have but uh, get organic try to find an organic place you know a farmers market or something here in our you know like in California if you're here in California get something in the neighborhood get something that was grown here in this country in this state uh, the, the opportunities of that food being a lot better quality are going to be much better than the uh, corporation that decided to get food brought in from outside the country because it was cheaper to manufacture. One of the things that happens is that other countries don't look at how they raise their cattle or their, their, their crops and they grow them in inferior soil or they put them in environments where there might be a chemical treatment plant sitting on a hill over here and the backwash is coming down into those crops or into the waters feeding the animals. It, and then that, that, that animal is butchered or the food is shipped here uh, overnight some kind of way. You know, thank God for all of our systems these days. But the food isn't necessarily as natural as what you're going to get with a locally grown organic source. Well, let, me, let me share something with you because, and I'm trying to remember the exact source. Oh my gosh, this, this has been a few years ago. But there's a lady I know who is an organic authority. And I, she introduced me to a gentleman and his job was to go to Mexico to inspect their organically raised foods. Yes. What they were saying, and this could be any country. This is just the, the reference I have, you guys. Yeah. Could, yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not That's selecting good. that uh, specifically. It's, it's the one I reference or the one I know of. There were no standards for organic farming of any kind, but they were labeling it organic. And, and his job was to go there to enforce the standards so they could earn the organic seal. And they couldn't do it because they were lying. You know, and, and I, I'm not saying, it, I don't know how widespread it was, but these farms in these communities and these regions, it, you know, it, it wasn't organic. And the other benefit too, you know, this is, this is probably more of a, a political statement, but this, this, this is beneficial to everyone though too. If you're concerned about you know environmental toxicity, if you're uh, you want to support your local growers, if you want to help uh, support local small business, all those things are important when you buy locally. Also, it's going to be fresher because it hasn't been trucked in. And then the other thing, if it hasn't been trucked in, they didn't have to spend fuel and pollute the air to get it to you. It's already there, or at least a shorter distance, so a more or fewer total contaminants have been released in the environment. Now. Yes, that's more of a, a, a political thing, and, and uh, hey, I'm I'm environmentalist and capitalist both. I split yeah. I, I split it down the middle. I, I appreciate both. I so, believe that. But but you might as well buy locally, buy fresh, support your local merchants, and ensure that you're getting something that has the quality that you're anticipating. Yes. Now, and this is this is part of that whole thing. But for anybody listening, if you want to find out about those. Uh, particular resources. I, I have a lot of my clients uh, become what's referred to on Amazon and I'm not plugging, I'm not making any money from this, I'm not doing this for any other political purpose or you know money making strategy but Amazon has a program called Prime Member. If you order things on Amazon regularly for $79 for the year, uh, they'll give you that first month for free but they have part of a benefit to customers that are Prime Members, you have access to their instant videos, uh, Prime Video and in that group there's documentaries on all of the food movies like Fast Food Nation, uh, you know, Super Size Me and all of those really popular ones but there's a bunch of really, really informative documentaries so instead of watching CSI one night, flip that on and watch it on your desktop and you can put it right up here in the corner of the screen while you're working on a document that's going to promote your next, you know, boot camp or whatever else that you have going on. So I think uh, it's a good resource. It's called Prime Membership at Amazon.com. Look into it. It's really inexpensive. You get free secondary air shipping on products and things that you get there. So pretty cool thing going on in our world today. All right. Yeah, I have heard of that actually. So there's a good resource. Yeah. Now, I want to make sure that we give them uh, your uh, contact information. So uh, let them know your web address. Yeah, they could reach me at... Uh, m2fitnesspros.lbc.com and that's our parent and you know the offshoots and things that we do uh, fatlosslbc.com and uh, that's you know you can find me uh, mrfatloss.com which is gonna link you right to my Facebook page and you're gonna see all of my rants and things and as I've gone and aligned myself with a, a new organization recently I've toned down 
the real sexy, sexy talk, because I know, you know, I'm all about <laughs> wanting to look a certain way physically in and out of the clothes. So I, I kind of calm that down, but it's more about inspiring everybody right now, being the lighthouse and not the critic. Um, I'm a big Stephen Covey fan and Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, and that whole process of just thinking more proactively, solutions oriented, instead of you know being the, the complainer, or the whiner. Make in, make a stance, you know, stand up, and uh, let's find our voices in this industry so that we can make it be what I know it can be, and what I've done for some you know twenty something years now. I love this business. I'm I live, eat, and breathe it. I do nothing else. <laughs> That's, I love this. This is nuts. I don't even feel like I work anymore. I, I oftentimes I feel the same way because I'm so passionate about it and I, I love it so much. So, you know, it, it, yeah, and, and we're actually working right now. Um, this is, is that what, what we're we do, doing? This is what we do for a living. And it, I thought and we were it, just it, wrapping it's amazing. It. Well, I mean, but that's what we do. We're connecting, bonding, sharing, and helping. So that's what it's all about. And that's kind of the take home message uh, as well. So um, thank you, Emil. So I appreciate it, man. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. I was always look forward to speaking with you. All right, well, thank you. And you guys uh, check out his stuff, click through on uh, the web addresses he mentioned, and uh, he's also on Facebook. All right. Aren't we all? <laughs> Thanks, you guys. All right, peace.